you've got an emotion about a, something in particular. But obviously, there's an emotion under that. Like, I have a, an emotion about my husband's addiction to alcohol. Right. Which goes back to my childhood. Yep. I know that. Yep. But I can't, I haven't been able to work out what it is. Yep. What do you reckon it might be? Just off the top of your head. I don't know. <coughs> you do know, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no. What happened in your childhood? You tell um, my father was a heavy drinker. Okay. What happened with you with that? Think about um, He used to come home, he used to bring a lot of people home when the pub closed. Mm -hmm. And I, my, bro, my twin brother and I used to be dragged out of bed mm -hmm. to sit on drunks' knees. Mm -hmm. And they would be kissing us and cuddling us mm -hmm. and nothing more than that. But it was, I just couldn't cope with it. Yeah. I, I, I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. So I didn't like the smell of it. Mm -hmm. Still does. And can you, can you feel what you know, they were like as well? There was a lot of things in there you didn't like when they were drunk. Well, when you're two, you don't understand. No, that's that. all right. It's not about what you understand, it's about how you feel. Right, all I know is that I I hated being dragged out of bed yeah. to sit on a stranger's knee, and I was felt uncomfortable about being touched by strangers. Okay, so there's a lot of touch issues going on there too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Have you felt your way through all of that? Did that happen when you were little? Because you see, if we're still getting upset about something that's happening in our life right now, it'll be related to the fact that we've not dealt with the core emotion when we were living. But I want to deal with it, but I can't work out what it is. Uh, can I just stop everyone from saying this? You only want to deal with something when you're currently dealing with it. <laughs> the truth, and we've got to be very truthful with ourselves, remember, you create automatically what you really want right now. You follow me? So when you truly want to deal with an emotion at that instant, you will be dealing with it. Before then, you're not wanting to deal with it. So we need to be honest. If I'm not feeling the emotion, I am not wanting to deal with it. So I'm allowed to not want to deal with it. That's fine. So I do. No, you don't. <laughs> If you wanted to deal with it, you'd be crying right now. Right now. And that's okay, I'm not judging that. I'm just saying, if you want to deal with an emotion, you will be actually experiencing it right this instant. I used to cry then. I know you used to cry then. And that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about whether you want to deal with this emotion or not right now. Be truthful about that. So, I'm allowed to not want it for a start. So, for a start, you're allowed to not deal with this emotion. You've got free will, right? So, you're allowed to not deal with it. So, there's no judgment about that. You're can allowed I, to do that. Can I talk about that stuff? Can I just keep going for a second first? Though? The reason why this is important to understand is because we need to first state the truth about our current condition before we will access any emotion. Do you understand what I've just said? Mm -hmm. If you are not truthful with yourself about an emotion, you will not feel the emotion. Do you follow me? Mm -hmm. I think so. Right. So, so the I truth is, I to do okay, that's truthful. You thought you did, that's truthful. So the truth is, I don't, what's happening right now is the truth. So I don't want to deal with this is the truth to deal with whatever it is, right? That's the first truth I need to accept inside of myself. If right at the moment I am not feeling the emotion, then right at the moment the truth is that I don't want to deal with this emotion. That's okay, you're allowed to not deal. Right? That's, but that's the first truth I need to accept. The next thing I need to say to myself is, I'm allowed to not feel this emotion. What's that telling me? I am making a choice. I'm making a choice and I'm allowed to make this choice. Uh, now I'm in a state where I'm being truthful. 
So let's look at this thing that's going on for yourself. I think I want to deal with the emotion, but the truth is, I do not want to deal with this emotion. And I'm allowed to not want to feel this emotion. But one question that's worth asking is, why do I want that? So right now, if you can ask yourself the question, <coughs> what comes to your mind about why you don't want to feel these emotions? And what we're starting to address here is what I call our fear list. Right? We have some fears about addressing this emotion. If you address this emotion with your husband, what's your fears? I have to do something about it. So you feel that you have to act, mm -hmm. and you don't want to act. Why are you afraid of acting? What might happen there? Because if there's a choice between me and alcohol... What will he choose? Alcohol. You feel he would choose alcohol? Mm -hmm. okay. There's no doubt about it. Okay, and then what does that make you feel inside of you? If that choice had been made by someone else, how do you feel? Worthless. Okay, and if, if he's making a choice putting alcohol over you, what are you going to need to do about What is she going to need to do perhaps? Change the situation. Change it. You're yeah. going to need to change this. And that's what you're afraid of, aren't you? Can you see that? I, I know I'm afraid of change. But you're afraid of changing this. Mm. Right? So then the question is, make yourself a fearless. Why am I afraid of changing this? What are you afraid of? See, it's our fears that stop us from feeling our causal emotions. So what might... I don't happen? know what I'm afraid of. Well, you, you at the moment don't want to know what you're afraid of. And you're allowed to not know what you're afraid of. But I do want but to know. why do you not want to know what you're afraid of? But I do want to know. No, but that's, see, that's a, that you're not telling yourself the truth. The truth is, if you don't know why you're afraid, it's because you do not want to know why you're afraid. And I know it's one of the biggest lessons that I have to learn. It is, I agree. I know that. And you know it's related to your childhood and these drunken men. Mm. Mm. Yes, and also my father used to come home from, from the pub and sit at, turn the light on and sit at the foot of my bed and dribble crap for hours. Mm -hmm. and I'd cry because all I wanted to do was go to sleep, and which is, is that, similar. And is that all your father used to do? Yes, it's definitely all he used to do. But as far as I can remember, and if I've chosen not to remember it, that's probably, I, I think that's what I'm frightened of. So what are you frightened of? I'm frightened, frightened of knowing what actually did happen. Exactly. Why would you be so frightened of that, you think? Because maybe something did happen. Exactly. So what do you really feel inside of yourself? That something actually did happen. That you've been telling yourself all these years that didn't happen. Right? And the truth is, something did happen. Because I, I can feel that. That's what you're afraid of. I have been starting to wonder that lately. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if you think of your law of attraction and all the different things that have been happening over the past few months, you can see that already you've been led down that path that perhaps something did happen. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Things that have been discussed around you, talked about around you, things that have things that popped out in newspapers to you. Uh, things that have popped out on telly to you. And a few little things that have come up with an older sister that she blanked out. Mm -hmm. And they've only just come up fairly recent. That's it? Yeah. yeah. So it's... it's. The truth is that it is one of the biggest things for you to resolve inside of yourself. Mm -hmm. And it's certainly related to this, your father and this drunken men and being in your life. Mm -hmm. And you need, the, the fear you have is that what you think might have happened, did. And if you believe it did, you're going to have to deal with a lot of emotion about that. And that's what you're afraid of. So that's the starting point mm. before you even get to your husband. It's 
Mm. Yeah. So you've got to start from the grassroots. Yeah, the, the trigger that. is the husband mm. drinking, mm. causing all of this association to be, mm. to occur. And but the, the more, more, like yeah, the more I try to work through, well, I think, well, I'm obviously not, but mm -hmm. um, the more I try to work through this, mm -hmm. the more he acts and looks like my father. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And he will. Mm -hmm. And when I first met him, he was, he was probably nothing so like my father. No, he wasn't so. He so. used to drink. But not excessively. He used to, used to drink excessively, but it wasn't, I did, it didn't bother me. Didn't it? Well, <laughs> <laughs> my first husband, I chose, mm -hmm. I chose because he didn't drink at all. Right. Yeah. And then something happened. I don't even know really what happened, but because you needed to deal with the <laughs> and then I met someone. That's my face. That's my face. I've known that he was my father. Exactly. But I always tell myself I love my father. Exactly. And this is a big issue that most abuse victims, if I can say that, have experienced, where they actually love the person feel they love the person who has harmed them. them. And it's a very big thing. That's what is a big fear. So can you see how all, all we did was just dug a bit deeper, deeper, deeper with your fears. And as soon as we started doing that, we started seeing what you're really afraid of. And usually the things we're really afraid of are the things that we did experience when we were little. So just allow that to settle with you now emotionally settled with you, that it's no, perhaps no longer an idea, but maybe some abuse has occurred now, because this is what you're afraid of. There's a very high likelihood that that has occurred. So when I go home tonight, and because my husband's been on his own tonight, I'll go home to mm -hmm. really severe alcohol fumes mm -hmm. and everything, and what I've been doing is Trying to ignore that, yep. squash it, yep. send in love, yep. which I don't really feel. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm doing a wonderful job because I'm exactly. sending in love, so yep. that's going to get to me to God quicker. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm sending in love, yep. that's what it's all about. Yeah. You've just toppled my whole world. Exactly. Sorry about that. Well, I'm not really sorry because no, the truth sorry. is always best. Well, I'm pleased that you have because I'm getting nowhere. Exactly. See, when we live in this fictitious state, which is a lie to self, we also, our whole life gets nowhere. It just repeats the same patterns, the same problems, over and over. Only when we start facing the truth does our life really begin to change. So the truth is that there's this big truth, sort of like a mountain on the side of your vision, <laughs> that you've been walking around and actually trying to remain disconnected from. It's your biggest fear. And, and because you keep telling yourself, I want to do, I want to do, I want to do, you're skipping over the fear about dealing, which is discovering the truth about your relationship with your father.